Are you tired of manually downloading and filing supplier invoices? What if I told you there was a way to automate the process entirely or at least partially? Imagine this, as soon as supplier invoices land in your email inbox, they are automatically filed away, categorized and readily accessible on your Mac. This episode will equip you with the knowledge to make that world a reality. Stick around to the end because I'll also be sharing some best practices to ensure the security and privacy of your data throughout the automation process. I'll unpack all of this after the intro. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 93 of the MacPona podcast. Whether it's your first time or your long-time listener, I appreciate that you carve out some time in your busy solopreneur schedule. I've created MacPreneur to help as many solopreneurs as possible save time and money running their businesses on their Macs. Now, in order to give you the most relevant Mac productivity tips and information, I need to know how well you're currently dealing with the three killers of Mac productivity, namely unnecessary clicks, repetitive typing, and file clutter. For that, just visit macpreneur.com for slash tips and answer a few questions which will take you less than two minutes. After submitting your answers, you will receive personalized time-saving tips based on your results. Once again, visit macpreneur.com for slash tips and start boosting your efficiency today. Okay, gone is the time when our suppliers <laughs> sent us invoices by snail mail. On one hand, it's better for the planet, right? There's no paper needed. And also it removes the need to scan anything since it's already in electronic format. Now, on the other hand, it adds up to the deluge of emails that we as solopreneurs already have to deal with. And at its core, dealing with this involves two steps. Step number one, retrieving a copy of the invoice ideally in PDF format, and step number two, filing the retrieved invoice in the appropriate folder for easy access and record keeping. Now, supplier invoices typically come in three flavors. Either they are attached as a PDF file directly to the email, or they are part of the email itself. It's the email body, like the Mac App Store purchases, for instance, or they can be as a link within the email that would then lead to the invoice. The main challenge is dealing with all these invoices efficiently, especially when we're juggling already a million other things. Now, the good news is that for the first two types, so PDF attachments or the email itself being the invoice, it's possible to automate the entire process, meaning absolutely no manual intervention as soon as the email lands in our inbox. However, when the email contains a link to the invoice, only the second and last step can be automated at the moment. When AI agents will become part of our digital life, it will then be possible to have them follow links and download stuff on our behalf. However, until then, it's something that we or our virtual assistants still have to do manually. I talked about AI agents in episode 78, entitled Three Must Know AI Trends for Solopreneurs in 2024. If you have missed that episode, just click on the banner that appears now in the top right corner. Now, before exploring the automation part, I would like to briefly mention two best practices that I see as a prerequisite for dealing with this problem. Best practice number one, gather all emails that need to be automated in a specific mailbox. It would be called something like finances or invoices. And so to do that in Gmail, it would be by creating a filter and in Microsoft 365 or Outlook, it would be called a rule. And once you create that, you can make sure that all those emails with invoices that are attached as PDF are labeled or moved in the proper mailbox beforehand. Here is an example of Gmail filter that I'm using. So it starts with from, then colon, then open parentheses. 
and then I've put a bunch of supplier email addresses separated with the word on or in uppercase. So that allows one filter to work across multiple suppliers, but that's not enough. So the second part of the filter is subject colon, also open parentheses, and then sometimes the, the subject line contains the word invoice. Sometimes some of my suppliers are uh, French speaking, so it's uh, written facture, or sometimes it's, they also say receipt, even though it's actually an invoice. And so with that Gmail filter, then all those emails get labeled finances. And that's for me uh, the, the folder or the mailbox that it will be used then for the automations afterwards. I already touched upon this topic in episode 87 entitled Master Your Solopreneur Inbox with these four powerful strategies. Okay, best practice number two, have a folder ready to receive the PDF invoice in the cloud storage of your choice. So it could be Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and then make sure that this folder gets synchronized locally on your Mac. Same thing, you can go deeper on this topic by checking out episode 90 that was entitled Access Your Solopreneur Documents Like a Boss on your Mac iPhone and iPad. Okay, so let's start by exploring ways to automate the first step of the process, which is retrieving a PDF file. And when the invoice is attached as a PDF, it's by far the easiest to automate, especially with Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 or Outlook. And the tool I recommend using in that case is called Zapier. It's free for simple two-step automations and up to 100 tasks per month, which is enough when we're dealing with supplier invoices. First example with Gmail to Google Drive. So whenever an email with an attachment of any kind is found in a specific folder, for instance, invoices or finances, then Zapier will upload the attached PDF into a specific folder in Google Drive. Second example, in the Microsoft 365 world, whenever an email with a PDF attachment lands in a specific Microsoft 365 mailbox, then Zapier can save the file into a specific folder in OneDrive. Now, it's not mandatory to use the same service for the email and the cloud storage providers, so you could always mix and match, or you could use Dropbox as the file destination if you wanted to. Now, if you use iCloud Mail or another system that offers IMAP support, then it's possible to use the IMAP by Zapier trigger. However, if two-factor authentication is activated for your email account, then you will need to generate what is called an app-specific password. So for that, you will need, for the uh, iCloud Mail, for instance, you will need to go to appleid.apple.com, go to security, uh, two-factor authentication, and there you will see the possibility to create an app-specific password, you can give it a, a name or label, I would call it Zapier, and then it will create a password. Um, be careful, copy it, uh, put it in your password manager, and then you, you will be able to use your Apple ID email and this specific password to uh, hook IMAP by Zapier to your iCloud email account. Now, like for Gmail and Microsoft 365 and Outlook, it can look for new emails that land in a specific mailbox so that it can fire only when needed. And what is great with Zapier is that it has an AI assistant that can help us craft the automation. So for instance, if you type, when an IMAP email lands in a specific mailbox, save the attachment to Dropbox, then the AI assistant will prepare a draft two-step process with the right trigger and the right action. The only thing that you'll need to do is give Zapier access to your email and Dropbox accounts, then test the automation on an existing email containing an invoice attached as a PDF. Scenario number two, when the email is the invoice, then it's a bit more complicated to automate the conversion into a PDF. 
Now for Gmail, there is a third party Google Workspace add-on called Save Email and Attachments that is developed by Digital Inspiration. It works as a Google Sheet macro that periodically runs a series of Gmail searches and then saves either the email body or the attachments into the Google Drive folder of your choice. It can even dynamically create a subfolder structure with the name of the supplier, the year and the month, for instance. Now, I've been using the paid version for a few years now and I have a bunch of rules, each of them involving emails that are stored in the finances mailbox. Actually, I'm using it whether the invoices are attached as a PDF file or the email is the invoice. And for me, in the set second case, it is by far the easiest method uh, for us uh, Gmail users. But what if your email provider is Microsoft 365, Outlook, iCloud Mail, or you use a regular IMAP email account? Now, in preparation for this episode, I have done a bit of research and there is an online service called pdf.co that can convert pretty much anything into a PDF and can be used with Zapier. The free plan offers 10,000 credits, which is equivalent to about 1,000 pages. And after creating a free pdf.co account, you will be able to copy and have your own private API key. So API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a way for online systems to talk to each other without human intervention. Once you have that API key, you will need to paste it into Zapier so that Zapier can talk to PDF.co on your behalf. And so here is an example of Zapier automation, which actually will require three steps. So the, the trigger could be, for instance, when a new email matches a specific search in Microsoft 365. Then the first action will be the conversion of the email body into a PDF. Now, pdf.co has an action called anything to PDF converter, and that one can be specifically used to convert the body of the email message into a PDF file. Once that step has been done, the last step is to save the generated PDF in the cloud storage of your choice. It could be OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive. At that point, it doesn't matter. Since there are more than two steps, a paid Zapier account is required to implement this strategy. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could also create a rule that forwards any email invoices to a personal Gmail account. And once in Gmail, then the Google Workspace add-on could kick in. However, you would need to make sure that the forwarded email does not land in the spam or the junk folder. Now, let's have a quick look at the second step of the process, which is filing the PDF invoice. Once the PDF is synchronized locally to your Mac, or if you needed to download it manually after clicking on the link, then further automations can kick in. The two main options here are Apple's built-in automator app and a third-party tool called Hazel. And I've covered both tools extensively in season two of the podcast. Now for this specific task of renaming and filing supplier invoices, Hazel is hands down the best tool. The main reason is very simple. It's much easier to extract information from inside a PDF, like the invoice number and the date, and then use that to rename the PDF file before moving it somewhere else. With the Sanebox invoice, for instance, it checks that it's a PDF, then it looks for a name that matches the following text. So, Sanebox underscore invoice underscore and then it looks for a number and it will collect that number into a token called the invoice number. After that, it will look for the word sandbox and also it will retrieve the invoice date from inside the PDF. And when those four conditions are met, then 
Hazel will rename the file by prepending the date in uh, the format that I really like, the, the four digits for the year, dash two digits for the month, dash two digits for the day, then space, then facture, which is invoice in French, same box, and then the invoice number at the end, dot PDF. Once it has done that, Hazel will add a tag and then it will move the invoice into a special folder that I check once a month or once every two months before sending everything to my account. If you want to delve deeper into Hazel, you can check out episode 67 entitled Put File Management on Autopilot with Hazel for Mac. Before concluding this episode, there's one more thing I'd like to mention. Whichever strategy you decide to implement, keep in mind the privacy and security aspects which in the end rely on trust. With Zapier, for instance, you will need to authorize it to access your email account and cloud storage of choice. And the good news that on the security front, Zapier has a dedicated page with all the measures that it has implemented. On that page, you can read, for instance, and I quote, more than 2.2 million companies trust Zapier, including 87% of the Forbes Cloud 100 companies in 2023, which inspires great confidence. This page also mentions that they have a bug bounty program to incentivize security researchers to responsibly disclose any vulnerability that they might find. And when it comes to privacy, Again, Zapier has certified its compliance with the EU-US data privacy framework, the UK extension to that framework, and the Swiss-US data privacy framework. Zapier has regular internal data audits, and it audits all its vendors too. Now, despite all this, it still does not comply with the requirement of HIPAA, so please don't use Zapier to handle healthcare and medical data. Now, having said that, Zapier is, in my opinion, the best tool to automate the online part of a solopreneur's business. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend you give it a go. Zapier has a free plan limited to 100 actions per month and two-step automation. So only a trigger followed by a single action, which is enough to download a PDF attachment to your cloud storage of choice, for instance. If you need more than 100 actions or you want automations with more than two steps, then I recommend upgrading to the professional plan. Zapier offers both monthly and annual subscriptions, allowing you to save about 33% when you opt for yearly billing. Very recently, Zapier simplified its pricing strategy. There is no limit in the number of Zaps that one can create, which was not the case when I signed up for Zapier a few years ago. Now, when, when it comes to the price itself, it depends from the number of tasks or actions that are needed on a monthly basis. Knowing that the base rate for the professional plan is 750 tasks or actions per month. Now, out of curiosity, I checked my usage for the whole year of 2023, and my average was 200 tasks per month across 15 separate automations. The peak usage was in September 23 with 635 tasks in a single month. So to recap, we've explored different ways to automate the retrieval and filing of electronic invoices sent by our suppliers. For the retrieval, the easiest scenario is when the invoice is sent as a PDF attachment, which can easily be dealt with using Zapier. When the invoice is the body of the email, then the solution depends from the email provider. With Gmail, I recommend and use a Google Workspace add-on that automatically converts email messages in PDF and saves them in Google Drive. For other email providers, either you forward the emails to a personal Gmail address or you can create a three-step Zapier automation 
using the pdf.co service. Now, when the email contains a link that needs to be clicked to download the invoice, the retrieval needs to be performed manually until AI agents become a reality. And to automate the filing and renaming of the PDF invoices, I recommend using Hazel. It's the perfect third-party tool to deal with this kind of problem. I hope this episode has given you some clarity. And so my advice would be to pick the strategy that resonated the most with you and start implementing at least one thing before the next episode. In the comments below, please share your main takeaway from this episode. And if not done yet, please subscribe to my channel so you will automatically get more helpful tips on how to run your business on your Mac. And if you're ready to streamline your solo business but don't know where to start, sign up for my 360-degree tech diagnostic service. After filling a comprehensive assessment form, we'll have a Zoom call during which I will give you my top three recommendations, including tools and services to consider. After the call, you'll receive a summary report with the points that we discussed and all the necessary links. And if you decide to work with me one-on-one -on -one after that, I will deduct the diagnostic fees from the first coaching pack that you will purchase. To learn more about that, just visit macpona.com forward slash diagnostic or click the link in the show notes. So that's it for today. In the next episode, I will cover tools and strategies to efficiently track our business expenses. So make sure to subscribe or follow this podcast to get it automatically next week. And until next time, I'm Damien Schroes, wishing you a great day. Thank you for watching the Macpreneur podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please leave a comment and share it with a friend right now.